Hey, Stephen, I did a billion views while you were still in diapers. And no matter how much you train, I'll still eat you for lunch. Your pal, Chuck. Hey, I like to box. <laughs> hey, yeah. Steven Crowder is a self-styled comedian. How'd you get into my house? Your show is huge. It's huge. So we are officially announcing the Louder with Crowder Mug Club for our daily program time. People are aware of how corrupt the media is, and there's a void, and we are going to take it back. You're listening to Talk Radio's Strangest Animal. This is the waterboarding Christmas telethon spectacular and waterboarding has to be done just properly. We're stopping. Train, by the way, hashtag tonight is Crowder Hijack Shia. For those people that are watching. Hey, Crowder's Hey, Crowder's Hijack You're an Eminem. There's no point in wondering where your pockets are. Tasting smooth, creamy milk. Chocolate center. You're an Eminem. It's all right. There's no sense in wondering where your pockets are. <laughs> YouTube dragged its feet before taking any action against conservative commentator Steven Crowder. So then we did announce the monetization change that Steven Crowder was. Box ad apocalypse right now, which is trending. Number four. Number four. Uh, that's um, incredible. You That's called the Justin oh. Bieber with a heart murmur. Oh. Hey. Oh, no. Hey, girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> baby, baby, no. baby. Oh, f <laughs> Throwback. Sleep <laughs> right yeah. off the bat. Wow. Uh, I, don't, I just had a physical it. yesterday where they were testing for a heart murmur. Oh. And they don't answer when you do a physical. Whoa. They just say, really? hey, well, you were testing. I go, well, do I have it? I don't know. We're going to have to wait for the results. I'm like, you just listened to it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Not sure. But they you didn't hear know. it. Did you record it with the stethoscope? <laughs> um, they, by the way, my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, is here. Hey. Quarter Black Hair is here. What's up? Audio Wade is here. 
Gerald A. is here. What's the wine of the day? <laughs> we have Mount Veter Cabernet Sauvignon. Mount Veter? Vidal. Vidal? Veter. That's not a word. It's, it's, it's not a word. word. It's not a real thing. You're making Vider. things up. I don't know why you are still around. Is too cute, man? <laughs> no. No, she's not. Okay. No, yeah, she's not. Yeah. Listen, guys, we really appreciate This is uh, it's the one billion view yeah. special. Yes. Uh, billion it's plays. I want to give a round of applause for all of you guys. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Not Gerald. And not Gerald. <laughs> um, I want to. Do, I, I do want to ask you. We'll be showing some videos, or I think some tweets going into the break yeah. uh, from you guys. But I want to. Know, what, what's been your favorite moment with the show in the last billion plays, uh, or how are you introduced to the show? I would like to know. We have some guests coming up. We're going to have Donald Trump Jr., Ted Cruz, Alex Jones, James O'Keefe, Mark Ripto, oh, so Jocko, uh, Gab McGinnis, John O'Hurley, Chill Sonnen, Dan Crenshaw, Jim Norton, Anthony Cumia, Andrew Clavin, Rand Paul, and Mahmoud Al Mahmoud, uh, Director of Public Relations oh, for yeah. ISIS. So they'll all uh, be calling uh, in. Still has a job. That's Still does yeah. have a job. He's very, <laughs> he's very good at it. Yeah. He's working hard. He's, he's harder than yeah. ever. Showing us yeah. the softer side of ISIS. I hear now. the uh, resumes out, though. And I know that, by the way, some of you will think this is lazy, really. What's it? We've used the term clip show in the past. Yeah, that yeah. being said, we're going to have some clips here from our favorite moments, a few montages, yeah. and also kind of give you a little bit of uh, so, some inside baseball. Oh, I didn't mention promo code. Ooh, That's right. There's a yeah. promo code. Now, if you enter in Crowder Billion, I think for the next, uh, I know at least for the next 48 hours, it might be a few days, nice. yeah. you get $20 off if you join ah, uh, Mug Club. Right. Mug Club, which deal. was never meant to be. Let me say something first really quickly. Garrett... Quarter Black Garrett and Audio Wade were the ones who said we should do this show. I kind of floated the idea. Yeah. I didn't really want to do the billion view show. We did the one million subscribers, and right. I said that's enough of a benchmark. Maybe if we did hit 10 million subscribers at some point. I don't want to be the guy who rests on the laurels of uh, how many people tune in or, or how popular of something is. <laughs> well, because we've seen people yeah. do that, and then they crumble because all of their identity yeah. is based on this sort of perceived True. success. Number, yeah. And uh, I just want to put my head down and get to work. but. You mentioned that it was more important not for us. Yeah, but it's, for the, it's for the fans. It's for the uh, fans. It's for it's for me. I'm I'm a fan. You know, it's I want to see all the old stuff and remember. Oh yeah, this is we've come a long way. And we abuse you both physically and mentally all the time. Yeah, and you're <laughs> still a fan. But but within the bounds of the law. Yes, within yes. the bounds. <laughs> of so that's the, the key. Law. You go well, right to the line. This is yeah. Chinese law. I don't think they're bound oh, by the Geneva Convention. Yeah, so yeah, different. we do yeah. what we want. Yeah. yeah, bamboo wood chips up the thumbnails. <laughs> um, and I do. <laughs> so I am really grateful. I do want to let you guys know. I'm, I'm so. I really am so grateful that you've been here for a billion plays, that you've made this what it is. Um, you know, you saw from that montage, started back in 2006 on YouTube, and yeah, then yeah. really doing regular uploads 2009 that were more political. I really never anticipated it to, to get, I shouldn't say didn't anticipate it, but I had no mm -hmm. idea that this show would become exactly right. what it is. Um, I'm, you know, I know, I feel like I'm now being like, oh, I'm so grateful, like, but I'm like <laughs> yeah. Taylor Swift, I mean, like, yeah. oh my God, you I, like won, me. I won my 45th Grammy, what? <laughs> <laughs> Never what? Knew me? No. Yeah. Um, I, and I should say, by the way, this is a billion, what you guys will see publicly. We've we've actually crossed a billion a long time oh, ago, yeah. but we yeah, had to remove yeah. a bunch of videos because of uh, the Vox Edpocalypse fascist yeah. pricks. Somewhere around a trillion, I think now. Well, actually, uh, if you add up, uh, those who are not Mug Club members, loudestcredit.com slash Mug Club, if you add up, because we do a daily show there, you know, mm -hmm. so four times the content uh, that you get here on YouTube, and then you add up the website and Crowder Bits, it's actually closer to two billion. But this is wow. just this channel, yeah. a billion, after all the videos had to be removed. Um, <laughs> and uh, still, still making no money on those billions right now? Billions of right, now uh, well, right now, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Pl you know, plus or minus zero. Zero, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Just, yeah. just making sure. Uh, just yeah. add, or, add or above. It's and, a great business model, clear, by the way. To be clear, there's some volatility in the market. <laughs> <laughs> so true, Due to yeah. Yeah. certain yes. components. We don't try and pick monetization stocks. We play right. the long ball, and I assume that every 10 years, we zero our money. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's not a good yeah. strategy. Yeah. Feel pretty well, good about it. You might need a money manager. The good thing is Inflation. my finances are unaffected by Corona. Oh, well, there you Perfect. go. There's some yeah, stability nice. there. Yeah. Invest in it's silver. It's a trade-off. Mug plus. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in kind of talking, you know, let me kind of give you a, a little uh, bit of a brief for, for people who don't know. You know, I started off as a stand-up comedian and actor, and really my first foray into doing more political videos was uh, uh, 2009. I did work with PJTV, and then it was with Fox News for four and a half years. And... Um, you know, I, they didn't really, and, and God bless them, the person who's the president at Fox News now, Suzanne Scott, I have nothing but good things to say about yeah. her. She actually, yeah. back then, she was a VP, would go in and advocate, advocate for me. Oh, nice. Because all I knew when I was at Fox was that Roger Ailes 
hate, hated me. He thought I was horribly unfunny. <laughs> Which, Every time I you rejected you him. Yeah. But then I found out that he hated Norm Macdonald, so I took it as like a badge of honor. Oh, Maybe yeah, I, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. By proxy, good company. no. Yeah. I'm just, he hated me yeah. for valid reasons. He hated Norm Macdonald because he was crazy. Um, and Norm Macdonald didn't pass the twirl test. Uh, it wasn't the best. Yeah. That's a tough one. He has a, a good flat. angle. He's flat. always shot from the right. And Suzanne Scott was the one who went in and advocated for me. With Fox News, they didn't know what they wanted to do with me. They just knew they didn't want anyone else to have me. And so um, I wasn't super happy there. Like, I was being paid, and I'm yeah, very grateful tough. for it. I was appearing a few times a week and writing articles. But I always wanted to be doing something like this. And so after that, this show that you're uh, watching right now really just started off as a, a terrestrial radio show uh, out of Detroit. And I went with them because I said, let me own 100% of the rights. Yeah. Uh, I didn't make a dime on terrestrial radio for a long time. It got syndicated out to a bunch of markets. And then we started learning how to operate a TriCaster and broadcasting from the den. And right, it just yeah. kept growing and, and, and growing and, and turned into, you know, what it is now. So I say this because sometimes you may have dreams and if you're inflexible, you think you're giving up on them. This is so much better than anything I could have anticipated. And I am genuinely grateful to be able to do this. It's a very, very hard job. It's a yeah. lot of work. But I do feel uh, blessed to be able to do this for you guys and that you have uh, rewarded us with, with a billion plays. And because think about it, a billion plays is worth nothing it's, if not for the people watching it. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you a billion. Just scroll over it like on Facebook and it counts as a play. That's right. Yeah, right. So, that's the amount of people the with coronavirus. That's that's not soon true. enough. Almost not there. true. You know what I'm Almost talking there. about? Not you true. and your secret bio weapons facilities. <laughs> click, click, but click. we have toilet paper, <laughs> so apparently we're going to we're be all safe. Yes, <laughs> we'll have barter money. And uh, does anyone have it before we get into the cinematic opens? Any of your kind of favorite yeah, stories so, as far as? Uh, if, if I can jump in here, I know Bill might want to. You can't to. do it. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people don't understand. Success was never guaranteed in this. And, in fact, there were a lot of moments that you had throughout your career where you were like, I, I have no idea how this is going to go out. And I remember one specifically. I can laugh at it now, but I felt so horrible. We were having uh, dinner, I think, or lunch, me, you, and Hiller, and we were talking about, like, yeah, man, I, should I keep doing this? Should I not keep doing it? I was like, look, if you ever may, – maybe if your videos don't get, like, 85,000 plays, you should maybe <laughs> pick another career. Back and you just, in. like, looked at me, and you're like – 85,000 is actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. You were like, a low ball. Oh, God. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, 85,000. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> oh, it was so funny. But I mean, that at, at that point, you had no idea. Like you had a, yeah. a desire for it and a passion for it. And you knew you could do something, but you had no idea how big it could possibly get. And you weren't assured of success. No, you know? but back or, then, or really, money at all. That's also something that I really love seeing is now there, there are so many younger people who are conservative or, or leaning right. Back then, and that's also, we'll talk about our top seven, uh, seven plus one, a lot of credit controversies over the years. See if you can guess which yeah. ones they are. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's what allowed the young Turks to go after me and really, you know, smear me back yeah. in the day when I had 30, 40,000 subscribers and they exactly, were big. Yeah. I, we didn't have the ability, we didn't have the firepower to yeah. correct the record. Hmm. So right. um, it was it was yeah. tough. There were no conservatives out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was when edgy atheism and liberalism dominated all yeah. of YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. uh, it was a, it, it's amazing how things have changed. We don't know where we're going, but it really is, it's been a crazy ride when you think about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So one, one of the funny stories that, kind of the moment that it hit home about kind of the war that you've had to fight with some of the folks in, in traditional media was one time I was on vacation, we were doing a copyright battle with Mashable, and they were insisting on trying to take one of your videos down, and oh, I'm that's like right. at a resort in Mexico trying to deal with it, and we ended up getting it resolved. And, and keep in mind, for those who don't know, yep. this was back then, it was a manual thing where Bill was actually filing paperwork to counter a false <laughs> Claim, right. not like they that. Wow. We're like saying, hey, you're going to do this. You got to come sue us. And then we're contacting YouTube and we're trying to fight through that system. And it was that was the moment that I really realized I was in a hotel room at this resort in Mexico. And I was thinking to myself, oh, what Steven's been saying about the war and like what how this is going on. And, and I don't mean war in the sense of, you know, what our soldiers are doing and what our troops are doing. But I mean, sure. in the sense of the war for for audience, for eyeballs and ears and, and knowing that there is a place for comedy and uh, conservative, you know, yeah, and, what, and we, we were, I mean, that's how we met, was actually, a yep. man who was a groomsman at my wedding, he's a Harvard lawyer, but I was like, yeah. hey, you're a lawyer, and actually Ben Shapiro negotiated my Fox contract. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. Hey, you have a good last name for a lawyer. Um, <laughs> and I remember uh, our, our buddy, he said, well, this is not the kind of law I do, but you might want to call my buddy Bill. That was, was it Engadget? Uh, Gizmodo. Gizmodo. Yeah, Gizmodo. Yeah. And that's where the article came out that someone who worked at Facebook, long before the leaks with oh, like James yeah, O'Keefe yeah. in, in Project Veritas, someone just leaked this memo that was at Facebook that people were basically putting code into pages to throttle and shut yeah. down some pages. And it was Ted, this was Ted Cruz for president, Fox News, Breitbart, Breitbart the Chris Kyle, Chris Foundation, Kyle Foundation, and then yeah. me. 
And you're like, what? And I was like, I mean, they, they had, expect they a had, Muppet to uh, sing yeah. one of these things is not like the other. And, <laughs> you know, and I was like, hey, uh, I want, I don't want to overblow this, but I, I sent it to, to Bill. And I remember I was at a hotel at that point. Yeah. And you just call back. You're like, yeah, this is not uh, like it's I'm not good. I'm reading this. It's, it's not a conspiracy. It's yeah. right there. And I, I remember looking at the other ones. and I'm like, I know all these other ones, but who is this guy? I was yeah. like, <laughs> that's what was so weird because yeah. we were targeted when we were so much smaller. Yeah. And uh, I think it's just because we were always pretty effective with the content because mm-hmm. we were unique and because you guys have been so supportive. I mean, yeah. we can't, you know, we'd love to do live shows. We we, we don't yeah. have the ability to do them because you fill up every venue and it becomes mm. a security Darn issue. Darn you. And we appreciate it. Like, <laughs> you, you guys have been much. so supportive. Demonetize. Yeah. You guys have made up yeah. for it with, with wow. Mug Club, you know, and you guys have joined. And obviously yeah. now you have the entire Blaze catalog. and. Yeah. It, it's just every time that we think, oh, we're going off a cliff, the Vox apocalypse, you guys came in and not only saved us, but supported us more than before. Yeah, absolutely. I know I sound like a broken record, but I cannot thank you enough. Sometimes artists go out and say, like, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do this for me. It's self-important. It's bullcrap. If I yeah. create art that is only of value to me, I am valueless. There is no use for what I do. I want to create content that is enlightening, entertaining uh, for you. And we always try to listen to you guys. We really do appreciate it. And since we've grown, and I hope you guys have seen this directly since you've uh, joined up at Mug Club, it's $69 for students, veterans, or, or military, just so you know. Some people yeah. think it's a little bit steep, and right now everyone gets $20 off. We've increased production value, and we've increased overall um, volume of content. Yeah. Yes. And so this brings us to our first, first montage. When we first started, you know, it was a radio show. Yeah. We would do these fake little audio commercials because it was oh, a terrestrial radio show. We had 12 commercial breaks. They're still good. Go back. But I would They're sit good, down yeah. with just with, at that point, not gay Jared, and uh, just go, all right, here's an idea. The Swiss Family Robinson second generation. And yeah. I would do an audio sketch about a bunch of inbred kids. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we found out we violated the law horribly, but it was oh. okay because only on podcasts would we do the fake warnings. Like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> and we do like Lena Dunham warnings, Velociraptor warnings. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know who it was. Oh, called awesome. said, like, this is highly illegal. You know, so I'm like, hey, don't, but don't it's, do that. it's on a podcast. It's an archive. Whoever thinks that's a live warning is an idiot. <laughs> And they said, okay, but you should stop doing it. So we did stop doing it. Right. Um, so we have these 12 commercial breaks. We just have to fill because right, we do this yeah. in a podcast. And we didn't want you listening longer. to Come on down to Ann Arbor Ford, Ypsilanti Ford, where yeah. we'll, if we don't give you the best price, we're just going to give it to you. You know, something like something that. Yeah, that's yeah, the stupidest so ad campaign. I don't, want my, I don't want to subject my listeners to that. So I'll do pedophile parodies of Michael Jackson classics. <laughs> and we'll just put these into the commercial breaks. Jeez. And then yeah. uh, after the controversy of Never Daily, which we'll get yeah. to seven plus one controversies, um, and you guys joined up at Mug Club, we realized a lot of these ideas that we had, we could now do. Yeah. And so we were able to do not only more on location videos, uh, which are incredibly labor intensive, but but these big intros that you guys have really come to appreciate and kind of expect, where sometimes there's some pressure, but it keeps us on our toes. Yeah. So this is actually, um, before we'll come back with our seven plus one uh, controversy throughout the history of Ladder with Crowder, right now I want you to enjoy a montage of throughout the years, the best or your favorite uh, that you tweeted me at S. Crowder, cinematic uh, or TV parody opens. Who's the head honcho around here? I am. Who are you? No, sir. My name is Stephen Crowder, and these here are the uh, uh, Mug Club Z's from Lighter with Crowder, late night comedy of salvation to salve the soul. And we hear you might have a platform for us to upload our videos to. Well, that all depends. You boys do conservative videos? I have a show in constant sorrow It's in trouble all its day Here is the Bob Ross estate. He's using every illegal tactic in the book. Hágale pues, hijo de putas. Drink it, you cis scum! Be there, man. A lot of tumblers. And then it was mostly just me uploading short videos, me talking to my camera. Mm. Well, back then, the Young Turks used to make quite a bit of sport of me. They teased me quite a bit. How many subscribers you got on YouTube, son? When you crossed over that one million mark, you are beautiful. They find a way to stop your content, not at first, but right when you hit that three million subscriber mark. You'll never 
hit four million subscribers. I will hit four million. I was always going to hit four million. I see not funny people on cable television. They don't know they're not funny. We were demonetized before that broadcast even went live. So what happens? Cenk Uyghur gets direct support from YouTube, and what do I get? A one-way ticket to demonetization, Bill. It's already been manually rejected for monetization. There's no way they can review it that fast. It seems that the YouTube algorithm has advanced beyond all comprehension. Tell me you have some good news for Right now, Captain! They took out Gavin! Ricky, you got ambushed, Ben Shapiro's gone, and it gets worse! How should it get any worse? Over 600 videos on the channel. All of them restricted in less than 12 minutes. YouTube's new policies had been so secret. No email notifications had been sent. Throughout my years, I've come to realize there are seven words you cannot ever, ever say on YouTube. And these words are retard, chink, tranny, faggot, fag, fig, and Mexicans. Yes, today, those are the words. And most of them might be even more necessary than ever because YouTube has become a liberal shithole. Let me show you boys how a real lady does. I hired myself a half Asian lawyer. Chino. Gordita. Come on, baby. Some people think he's half Mexican, he's half Asian. <laughs> ah, thanks to a funding from Muck Club, those false plaintiffs have pulled their hard strikes again right on time. To the second. They always do. I fight them for you, and we win every time. I hear you boys ordered a half Asian ass kicking. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond. I don't want no GoFundMe's. I don't want no Patreons. There are too many damn whitey conservatives on this platform. $10,000 for me and my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, by ourselves. We decide what gets heard or seen on YouTube. Our jihad is already won. And there we go. Thank you. <laughs> now, it's awesome. not only a clip show. It's not yes. only a clip show, but not there's all. some of that. No. You know, yeah. Sometimes yeah. a billion views, you, uh, you take a break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you do that a little. Gosh, oh you, just, gosh. you just look back and you're like, the volume of con how many yeah. days and nights that we've worked on these. Yeah, these a lot. So, so what's, your, what's your favorite of the montages, the intros that you've, I'm sorry, montage, the intros that we've done? My favorite of the montages? Yeah, my favorite uh, of the montages. Uh, gosh, you know, it's, it's tough to pick the my favorite. Probably, it still goes back to Jaws, the first yeah. Jaws, mm -hmm. because that was the first Didn't one we such, ever did. Yeah. And yeah. I said, you know what, I think I can work on this impression. And the, the, the green screening, the lighting was really good. We matched. Yeah. I'm a big fan of matching tenor and tone. Mm -hmm. That was up there, Raging Bull, and um, uh, you know the recent Saving Private Ryan was technically kind of a yeah. kind of a marvel. Yeah. So I it don't was know, very what, very nice. I, I like have... I like it when Maddie dies in them. Any oh. any of those wow. when she blows up, gets yeah. shot in the head. You know, it out for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mm. Too cute, Maddie. I'm just kidding. Those are yeah. pretty. And how how many times did I ask you to put on an outfit uh, where you said <laughs> I, no? For you an know what's funny is I tell people all the time they're like, oh wow, I can't believe you like did that on the show. Aren't you? Don't you like? have another job or, <laughs> and I said yeah for now but no I said you know it is funny like the, the other things the other things that are asked of me and I'm just like nope not gonna do that I think yeah. we're at like 13 27 times you've asked me to wear a dress and I've yes. said no yeah, yeah. and I think that wasn't even for, that wasn't even for the show player, man. Yeah. Right. no that was right. just in general that was just, just like a come to meetings two way mirror at TJ yeah. Maxx yeah, yeah. I, I think that's why I ended up in a dress so many times is because he yeah. said no and I well you I ended up in a dress because you made such a big deal out of it probably you did it and you're like I hate this I hate this Guess what you're doing yeah. next week? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> we just <laughs> filmed another those. one. You know that, Gerald? <laughs> yeah. We just filmed you bitching about wearing it. Oh, you never actually yeah. put it in the show. No, we never. As a matter of fact, we never actually requested. Anytime you see Gerald in a dress, it's just our our uh, security cameras that we keep running. Oh, <laughs> come and on. then we add him in like a Tupac hologram yeah. oh, later yeah. on. But I this would, brings uh, us so uh, much work. Speaking of strolls down memory lane, I think this is time to actually go through the top seven plus one controversies ah. that have happened here on Louder with Crowder. So uh, let's go to it. Seven plus one. You forgot the fun in the chamber. All right, and let me know before you, well, you can pause it. If it's an archive, let me know which ones come to uh, mind for you. Um, I guess I'll, uh, kind of starting in chronological, number seven would be uh, the u- the union incident in Lansing. Yeah. This was before oh, this right. show yeah. existed, but with, I was on Fox News, mm. and I went down, and it was a right-to-work That's rally. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were in a tent. There was this tent. It was AFP. And I was just there because, you know, there's somewhat safety in numbers. Yeah. And uh, the yeah. guy there, there was this guy, you could smell whiskey on his breath, told everyone that I was uh, Devo- the DeVos's grandson. Like, I'm yeah. related to the DeVos family, Betsy DeVos. Because, you know, they, mi- these leftists in Michigan, they hate the DeVos family, despite the fact that they employ half the state. And yeah. <laughs> well above a living wage. <laughs> How right. darn you employ me. Know, so right. he was trying to get everyone against me for a while. Like, yeah. he's the DeVos's grandson. Get him. Get him. And uh, then they started kicking down the tent where the right to work pro protesters were right. yeah. cutting in with box cutters. And uh, this guy Insane. tripped over a tent peg and I got just sucker punched. You guys have probably seen this. People often send it like on Twitter, like it bothers me. Like, oh, I remember like, I was punched. You do realize like I uploaded that. Oh. Like, that's <laughs> the only footage that you guys have is our upload. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason that was a controversy though was because the guy fell, got up, punched me, and then I, I just sort of walked away. And then the rumor started, and it was the Young Turks, I believe, who started it, that I had shoved him first. Right. Yeah, because, you know, right. when, a guy, when you shove a guy, he falls this way into yeah, you. Exactly. And um, the prosecuting, uh, or whatever, the prosecuting attorney, I guess, in, mm-hmm. in Lansing, uh, never took, I, there was a deposition. I didn't know about it. I was never there. He met with the head of the unions in wow. Michigan, did it without me, and said, it was pretty clear from the Young Turks uh, footage, they didn't have footage, it was their commentary. It's pretty clear <laughs> wow. from the Young Turks footage that uh, Steven started it, so I let the guy go. Oh my wow. God. Is that, is that wow. common for like a deposition like that, for me to not know, not be there, and my evidence to not well, even be accepted? Uh, it's, unco- it's not common that you would have been there for it to happen. It is uncommon that they didn't come and ask you for it. It's clear that yeah. they were looking right. for an answer. They uh, found one thing to support it, and they were just moving on. And, and so this became a big thing. Uh, I remember no, the it, union It was a huge thing. And, and the most frustrating part for me, just as your friend, because at that point, I don't think I was very involved with the I'd call in every once in a while. It was just like, I know Steven could have kicked that guy's ass without even thinking about it. Like, yeah. But you were in a mob Maybe not. of people. Well, the thing is, you, know? you hear, if you go if you go and if you watch it, I think of the B-roll, and I, you can't hear right now, there's a guy saying, oh, I have a gun. I'll kill yeah. a motherfucker with a gun. Yeah. That's a guy saying yeah. it. That's a union guy. And I might be able to, f- maybe I can find some of this footage, but several of them followed me back to my car. Yeah, I remember that. that. And you're like, look, if you're me. just going to yeah, have to walk said, in front uh, of yeah, me. Yeah, that's right. I said, yeah. just walk in front of me. Yeah. That, and I think that was the guy who said, I'll kill a mother with a gun. Yeah. So this wow. just was before Antifa, before Black Lives Matter. Yeah. I was the original, uh, it's like a know, prequel. the knockout game, only I didn't go down. And uh, <laughs> then I, I, I ran uh, uh, scared because they said they were going to Kill, kill a mother with a gun. Yeah, yeah. referring yeah. to me, I believe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I was the mother be, in yeah. question. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's number seven. That was the first time I ever uh, had become sort of a national story to that. Really? Yeah, yeah, and that's that's. Uh, that. Number six. Do you remember? You remember this one there, Court of Black Garrett? Yeah. Wendy Davis at the yeah. Women's March. Do you, yeah. Now, do you? So you guys remember <laughs> yeah. this? The you, Women's you March came pretty pals. great. Yeah. That's, just, that was before we became pals. It, no, no, no. This is this is. I felt like it was a moment where you guys should have been pals. Right. Yeah. Well, we were kindred spirits. We got an interview with Wendy Davis at the Women's <laughs> yeah, March. Which is awesome. <laughs> the reason why, you know why? We just had a producer oh. go up and say, hey, will you give an interview? I'm busy. Yeah. Uh, she's trans. Yes, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Wendy Davis yeah. came out. And the reason I picked this, do you remember? Because Wendy Davis, yeah. Texas, they yeah. were grooming her for a national run. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, With her tennis shoes and the whole deal. Yeah, she know? was going to be the next yeah. sort of like Elizabeth Warren or Debbie yep. Wasserman Schultz. Yeah. Who failed miserably in an electoral. Yeah. Election. Right. <laughs> but I think a big reason for it. So if you watch this, yeah, you can see this right now. It says the Women's March. Only got an interview because I claimed to be transgender. And that's why we started using Stephanie <laughs> undercover right, yeah. because we realized that's I can do character. anything yeah. and yes. no one will say a word. You get yeah, a pass. I can you piss know. hot at a Planned Parenthood for pregnancy and they're like, congratulations. And that actually happened. We can go back and watch that video. By the way, if a man pees, uh, tests positive yeah. for, for a pregnancy, as I did at Planned Parenthood, means you have uh, testicular cancer. Yeah. Yes. But they didn't say that at Planned Parenthood. Like, right. well, I don't know. Are you going to do it's a, a boy. Gen- gender oh, reveal? Yeah. <laughs> um, but with Wendy Davis, there's a moment right here. Here, we'll play this right now where you can see it. If you see, my hat blows off in the wind yeah. and my wig shifts. And I thought, this jig is up, this sure. is done. No. And then she's just like, oh, I said, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. 
And she's like, that's okay. It happens to the best of us. I'm like, it does? <laughs> the best of us? I put sorry. it back on. And that's then so funny. she never won any sort of elected office again after that. Because I think that if she were to run for president or even some national office, I'm like, hmm, yeah, okay. Well, we do see your record. We do see this pamphlet on the issues. Is this not you with a <laughs> fake tranny at the Women's March with his wig and cap flying off? <laughs> discussing p economics. I quote, p economics, Miss Davis. And there were all these articles about it and how uh, it was misleading. Yeah. And that was one where it's like, yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, on purpose. We'll, we'll own that one. That is the purpose of our cover. <laughs> Miss, no question. Oh, that's awesome, though, because you can put her in a corner. She can't do anything against you. Like, you're, the whole wig could have come off. You could have started talking oh, yeah. like a man again. And she'd just been like, I can't, I can't not believe yeah. you. Yeah. I have if to believe you. If she questioned it, she would have been done. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's just, uh, they, they, they just, they give you all kinds of cover. If oh, you my just gosh. claim yes. it. Because well, yeah. they say, well, you know what? You're a marginalized group. Okay, um, I guess that's fine. I can just you know, just go out and commit felonies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and they're cute. Whatever. Um, number, we don't have these numbers. Is this number five? Yes, yeah, right, this yep. is number five. Uh, this was, and you were with, we, I was working with you at this yep. point. This yep. was undercover Antifa. Yeah. And this was one where it actually led to the arrests of people. It did. Yeah. Which is funny because the media coverage said no arrests were made. Right. Not only were yeah. arrests made, they were made based on the weapon that was handed <laughs> to my producer <laughs> <laughs> on camera earlier right. that day. Um, we went down, there was a Ben Shapiro show in Utah for people who, who, who don't remember. And you didn't go with us, right? We were- No, it was before my time. It was, well, uh, had you worked intermittently with us? Maybe? Uh, yo, yeah. That's okay. Right. I came and worked in before, and then you came back. Came yeah. Back later. And uh, my, I know my my dad went down with me because most right. people didn't want to go into this this uh, yeah. this quagmire. Yeah. And obviously, not gay Jared was with me, and and we went down, and uh, they handed not gay Jared. We thought it would be funny. It was, yeah. it was a goof. It really was. And yeah. then they hand him Oops. an ice pick. He's like, oh, <laughs> this is uh, not a goof. <laughs> a taser and a knife. And I'm like, hold, just hold on. I'm gonna go get my sawed off shotgun. He's like, ah, uh. yeah. And Jared has a an ear. It was a really Jerry rigged earpiece. It was an iPhone with like a headphone thing so we yeah. can be, oh, all I yeah. hear is him going like they're giving me they're giving me knives I'm in the car with my dad <laughs> what? they're giving what? me knives I'm like what, what? and it, I'm sure if they heard his earpiece they would just hear but did you just say they're giving you knives <laughs> what? Uh, oh my god and then he goes he goes uh, he goes he goes oh they're going to get a sawed off shotgun they're going to get a sawed off Bail. shotgun Bail. and yeah. a, a k-bar did you just say K bar? I'm like, yeah, oh okay. You have to. He goes, you want me to stay? And we go, you have to get out of there, Jared. You have to get out of there. And then we hear, I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Hold on. Hey guys, I gotta take a. Shit. And he, went, <laughs> <laughs> he just left. Oh, <laughs> oh just my for us god. This was not unusual for him. No, 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 not at all. No. And so then after that, we're thinking. I texted Ben Shapiro. Who, well, thank you. And they were trying to stab me with a K bar. I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> just saved your life. No, I did. Yeah. I told him. I did tell him. I said right away. Fun. Hey, be careful. He came in the right. back way. And then yeah. we were dealing with. The local police right there. So the local police said, what do you have? Do you have this footage? Yeah. We said, yeah, we had brought in our laptops. Yeah. There was local news there. And I said, hey, do you guys want this footage? Because I know you're covering the protest. Here, here is the action I was showing to them. Look, this is the actual footage. See, they're handing him a knife. They're handing him a taser. They're saying that they're going to get sawed off shot. This is on camera. Yeah. Every single local reporter turned it down. Had no interest. Wow. I said, by the way, this is legitimate. We're going into the police van right now to offload the footage. You can have the exclusive. And with Ben Shapiro Crazy. that that day was um, that uh, reporter from, uh, what was his name there, uh, Darren? Do we know the name of that report from 60 Minutes? Guy uh, the guy had a panic attack live on air. Oh. Does yeah, someone yeah. remember the name of this guy? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that guy. The, all right. Someone will bring it up and, and give it to me afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, national news. And he was looking at it, and we said, look, 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 they're handing us a knife right here. They're, they looked in a taser, and uh, he goes like, oh, okay. And then afterward, we saw them all go out and say, a largely peaceful protest. Exactly. Right. That yeah. night, the girl who handed us the taser, and we gave that it back to her, tased yeah. somebody with that weapon and was arrested. My God. And then we sent on the, because uh, we got into their cryptic messaging app, yeah. we sent them uh, just uh, us going like this, giving them the middle finger. <laughs> <thing. laughs> yeah. And I swear to you, the girl who was arrested for using that taser was going, you better give my knife back, ass. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm in jail. Jeez. When I get out of this cell, I, I better have weapon. my wow. knife waiting for me or I'm oh going to sue. We Give said, me my evidence back. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, and that's the, yeah. that's got, when Antifa was basically you know, peaceful. Everybody thought they were peaceful. Everybody like, thought they you were guys yeah, turned point, into like undercover on. journalists there. Yes. Yeah. And it wasn't just that he was going back to get a shotgun. It was, I have a fallback position. Right. If things go down, we can like fall back to my car. I have multiple guns there. Right. We're like, what? It was like peaceful protest? It was like it wasn't in Patriot where you're running back and then the people are Robin Hood, where then they come up from like the dirt 
trap. <laughs> exactly. like, Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> Only it's you know, people in bandanas yeah. Uh, yeah. who are gender non-binary. And, and the guy who turned the story down is, uh, let's see, Dan Harris. Dan, Dan Harris! Harris. Yeah, little, Dan what Harris. an asshole! Right? Yeah. Yeah, the ten percent happier yeah. guy. Yeah. 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 Meditation yeah. and all that stuff. And then you know, uh, that oops. that girl was arrested, and I was just this was something to me. I learned and the reason I picked these initially, the union uh, issue, and this. I learned really quickly that the media doesn't care about truth. No. They really, really don't. Yeah. They, listen, you can argue. Okay, some people on the the far right are aggressive, and then some people on the far left and they're fringe. But they weren't arguing that. Like I said, they no. were arguing Antifa is a peaceful organization, uh, like Vox. There was, and they're anti-fascist. That's all it is. Yeah. If it's a crime. It's a serious yeah. crime. Serious crimes were committed. People were arrested, and it was not a peep. So thank you guys so much because we got we got tens of millions of plays on that, oh, yeah. and yeah. it was covered. That never would have happened if not for Mug Club because we would have never been able to afford going out there right, exactly. uh, and bringing a crew, and certainly would have never been able to afford uh, uploading this and having the staff to do it. Like That's something that I think changed the view of Antifa. And we didn't yeah. go out and yeah. sort of champion our own cause saying, hey, we're the ones who exposed Antifa, but it really was the first undercover sting that showcased them to be not only as violent as they were, but the top story was the fact that the media yeah. wanted it to not be a story. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They don't yeah. want anything um, to do right, This next one is uh, very much, is this three? Four. 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 It's when Bob this Ross. Was, this yeah. is the Bob Ross estate. Oh, man. Yeah. This is this when is we the tested <laughs> the retainer. Yes, you of did. Half yes, Asian yes, Lord, yes Rich you did. Um, now, did you, now, Audio, well, you were new here, but when, when did you start watching the show? Well, I started, so I think the first thing I ever saw was the uh, undercover Muslim bakery. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, was right. good, oh, yeah. So. that was just me with an iPhone. Yeah, it yeah. was. So I, I, I remember watching that and, and talking about the sting. Like it was it was sort of like an undercover thing, but it was also funny. It was so in talking about what we were talking about earlier. It was, it was the, so different from anything else that I was seeing because it was obviously like a right wing video, but it was entertaining and felt like yeah. it felt like news. But it also was we weren't yeah, looking was, for a lawsuit. Right, we were looking right. to entertain people. Yeah. Like, hey, look at this. Like I, I was yeah, very yeah. clear. I was like, hey, I don't think Muslims should have to bake a penis cake. Right. But right. you do. Yeah. That <laughs> yes. was the point that of the video. Yeah. Yeah. And I just yeah. have, and this is what that's a. Yeah. I appreciate that because yeah. I used to have all these conservatives, and you, I think they approached yeah. you now with like, hey, you know what? You have a case here. You should sue. I'm like, first off, I'm not looking to sue. I'm looking to create content. Now, yeah. in the right. case of our show, let's say we're throttled, we're unfairly treated. Different. That's where if you look at the options of being litigious, but we can't just go out looking for controversy and yeah. suing. Right. We right. always seek to create content. Yeah. And that yeah. was right. the Muslim And the hypocrisy one. was so funny. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. It was Especially yeah. at that point Pointing in, out that in little culture, it was all about that. That bakery, yeah, it was a perfect time to drop that. I remember just the balls. So they were, and the they, sheer I balls. This, the the Muslims were very friendly in saying no. Really. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, can like, you yeah, bake yeah, a cake? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, and two men, uh, and then they're holding hands. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <Right>. no, no. <laughs> um, so, did you see the Bob Ross, the original one? When we I did think it? I, I don't think I did. Okay. I think, so I, yeah, this is this it's the greatest. It's the greatest video ever. Well, this is a good example of you know we were doing a three hour show. So this was back when it was a radio show, and it was bizarre. The first Bob Ross sketch. Uh, well, you can just see some B-roll here a little bit, and then you can go and watch these clips, and I'll actually toss to the final clip. So we, it was just an idea. This was in the middle of a three-hour show. We didn't upload it as a clip, I don't think, right. for a while. Yeah. It was just, hey, let's do a Bob Ross. Pen. It might have been after uh, Charlie Hebdo. I'm not sure. I might have just wanted <laughs> uh, to yeah, piss I'm some people sure. off. It yeah. had been a while. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It had been a while. And so I figured I was due for a. F I'm like, oh, that head is fatwaless. I was about to say, did your fatwa expire and you wanted to re up or what? Um, and so uh, we just did that. We threw it into the three hour show where yeah, I was yeah. painting Bob Ross as Muhammad. Yeah. And we thought that that was it. Well, that was not it. That was definitely uh, not it. That blew up, right. became very big. And then we did it a second time. <sighs> Oh this no! That the first one. time, I remember Nick yeah. DiPaolo was on that show. God yeah. love him. Nick DiPaolo, right. one of the funniest people on earth. Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we were we had a thumbnail, and it's a picture of me, Nick DiPaolo, <laughs> and the Muhammad <laughs> painting. Yeah. And I just got a phone call. Sorry, the censor button today. Yeah. But you have to. I get a phone call, ring, ring. I'm like, oh, Nick DiPaolo. I remember I was driving. I was driving in downtown Grand Rapids. I was going to uh, a coffee place. Um, what was the coffee place? I can't remember what it was. Uh, Madcap. And yeah. then I got another call from Nick DiPaolo. I'm like, oh, that's what two calls. Maybe it's an emergency. I pick it up. Hello. Are you out of your f***ing mind? <laughs> what? Just, you know, I think, like, you're talented, you got balls, but you have me next, are you, you, are you kidding me? You have my picture right up there next to a f***ing painting of Muhammad? What, are you crazy? <laughs> you gotta change it, you gotta change it now! <laughs> Get me off! I'm like, I'm like, well, yeah, you know, you're no stranger to controversy. Yeah, but there's some f***ing 
in context. <laughs> That's just my face next to the next to Muhammad. And I said, well, I can change it, but I'm not home. It's going to take me a couple hours. He's like, get home. <laughs> so that was the uh, first yeah. one. Nothing uh, happened. Yeah, nothing on the legal side. And then there was right. BuzzFeed Boldly painting in period blood. Period, was a yes, video, right. And this BuzzFeed was boldly. featured on YouTube front page. Yeah. Oh. And I think we spoke with some people at YouTube, and I think they did something that was something that was also religious. It was something with Christ. It was like mm. piss Christ, and I don't remember yeah. exactly what it was. So we said, well, okay, uh, now this is happening. And we <laughs> brought back Bob Ross to paint Muhammad in menstruation. And this yes. was just because yeah. they had featured it from BuzzFeed Boldly. We said, well, let's add a different layer to this. And uh, that was a problem. It's always the layering that gets us in trouble. The Muhammad layer. Then, yeah. not long after this, we receive... A letter. We receive an actual letter, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And you tell them what the letter was. It was from... Uh, uh, yeah, so it was from the estate of Bob Ross. Right. Who the owns the okay. rights to his likeness and his materials and whatnot. Um, and they were upset over <laughs> the <laughs> painting and no. the sketch and the content what? and Why? every minute and second of it. <laughs> and they were very interested in... Uh, uh, demanding that we take it down, and they listed out some legal arguments, uh, which we responded to. One of them was also that, as you know, is a flagrant disregard for Islamic law and customs. Yes, yes. Like yes. Wow. Yep. So it was that. Uh, there was a couple, you know, legal arguments about copyright and, and some other, you know, use right. of likeness and a few other things. Um, so we wrote which back. We, we knew we were in the clear on that. Yeah, we yeah, knew yeah. we were good on that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we knew, you know, there may have been some, you know, social mores that we were crossing, but certainly no <laughs> sure, yeah, legal, yeah. legal lines. But you um, knew that uh, you knew that when you signed up for this right anyway. Like, yeah. I was like, on the copyright <laughs> yeah, yeah, front, yeah. we're fine, right? Yeah. And yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, you're fine, but you but, probably shouldn't paint Muhammad in period. But I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. That's not, that's not your domain. <laughs> yeah, it's not the question for you, lawyer. I can find any yeah. lawyer to tell me no. I want you to show me yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's like the Jerry Maguire, yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so we responded, you know, tore apart their arguments, you know, show why there was just no way it was going to happen. So they wrote back again, and they said, you know, just if you have any human decency, <laughs> will you take it down? They gave up on the legal arguments. Oh, right. oh, they gave up on the social more arguments. But they were still pretty jerky because they were telling us yeah. we didn't have any decency. Yes, yeah, and yeah. And that is yeah. why. So, And this is one of the times where I said, hey, half Asian Bill, and I think now, if I were to ask, you would dress up as Bob Ross now, because you, you dressed up as Tattoo. Bob Ross is nothing. Oh, right. But yeah. at the time, yeah. it, it yeah. was the first request where right. I said, uh, Bill, mm -hmm. will you respond as Bob Ross? And he said, no. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I think, I think I will always be happy to be Bob Ross. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what I'm painting is Bob Ross. That's a yeah. different yeah, thing. So yeah, so that's right. Yeah, that's exactly um, right. Yeah, I think one of my favorite conversations with Bill I've had is he's looking at a script that I wrote, and he's going through it silently, and then... Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lick my lips. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was my only line. It was like no. Bill, That's stand the there. Right there. Yeah. And then I was. It was in like one change. It was like stand, 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 stand. Lick lips. I was like, nope. <laughs> who, who am I, Drake? Nope, not happening. Am I doing? Am I doing this? No, I'm not doing it. Oh, uh, but it. you know, they wrote back. You know, we wrote back one in response to that last letter. They were like. Please just like take it down, and, and in the kind of a snarkier part of the letter, I just said, "If you've if you've ever watched the show, you know we're not going to take it." <laughs> <laughs> and I remember there was there Never was one happen. final yeah. communication where then we responded by video, and that is where uh, it could be half Asian Bill said he wouldn't dress up as Bob Ross, but I think it was more so that he didn't want to uh, be involved in painting said legal representatives um, oh, as Bob Ross yeah. eating from a pile of corn infested shit. Yes. This is the moment Along, I was like, this show, <laughs> the greatest show of all time. Along with Muhammad, uh, we just tossed it in there, and uh, here is actually a clip to the grand finale of uh, the Bob Ross controversy. <laughs> Welcome back to the joy of painting. I'm Bob Ross. Now painting can be used as more than just something that's beautiful to look at. It can be used to express oneself. Sometimes it can be used to express frustration, tranquility, or sometimes gratitude, as we'll be doing today, expressing gratitude in response to some passionate fan mail we've received. 
we have a lot of different viewers here at the Joy of Painting. Some viewers are policemen, some are firemen, and some are lawyers who we'll be responding to today who have talked about this show with great vigor that Bob Ross is in violation of copyright law. So we want to respond to them and make sure they know they're welcome on this program so you can grab your palette. Today we'll be working with a lot of browns. A lot of browns. The beauty of brown here is you can mix it with any color and it's a different brown. Become a bay or a taupe. For our passionate lawyer friend, we're going to start by drawing a pile of shit. Just with little short strokes. There you go. It's a little, starts off as a molehill and turns into a mountain. Just a big old mountain of shit. And there we go. Just a valley of piping hot shit. We'll mix up some color, add some red in there. It'll make it a little bit more of a cocoa flavoring at that point. Give it some depth. And now we're going to move into portrait mode and paint our lawyer friend who sent us the fan mail falsely notifying us of a violation of copyright. And there's our lawyer. Like a gazelle at a familiar watering hole, bending over on all fours to eat from our steaming hot pile of shit. Let's draw a few lawyers. I'm sure with a firm they have some lawyer friends. I'm still going with brown. You can use any color you like, taupe or sand. Depends on the diet. Here's another lawyer. And there you go. The lawyers who are sent out in droves on YouTube to flag his violations. Eating from our firm but corn infested pile of shit. Oh, there you go. Everyone's, everyone's sharing. There's plenty of this pile of shit to go around for the entire firm. If you feel like there's not enough, you can wait your turn. There's plenty of room for you to eat at this big old mountain of shit. And there we go. Oh, that's lovely. And you know what? We're a big fan of traditions here at the Joy of Painting with Bob Ross. And they look like they could use a friend. So let's finish this up with a nice little portrait of Muhammad. Joining them and eating from this big old pile of shit. There he is, Muhammad, holiest of prophets, peace be upon him, with the team of false trademark flagging lawyers eating from a big pile of personally drawn shit. From me to you, I'm Bob Ross. Happy painting, and God bless you, my friend. And we never, we never heard from them yeah. again. Yeah, oh, no. Nope. Like I think I said, at that point, we are not the lost. sharks of YouTube, but we can be a puffer fish. In that, <laughs> that is true. You bite us, Spiky. you hurt your mouth, or even if you capture us and you kill us and you cook us up, some, we're going to poison you. <laughs> One way or the other. Yeah. Either way, unsafe. Really, <laughs> it's all coming up, Crowder. Oh, nice. So um, <laughs> number three, and we can move to, this one. We don't really need to go through uh, for that long. It was the ABC Disney Oscars right, stream yes. that was pulled. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason this was pretty significant was because we had been dealing with false copyright stuff a lot. Yep. Yeah. And what happened was we would have all these claims. We've never lost any of those hard claims. They've None. changed the system now. But back when they used to actually have to file a claim and you would manually counterfile, yeah. not a single one have we ever lost, okay, to be clear. But then they realized, uh, sure, there's a two-week process, but then the video ultimately gets up. They realized they could hit us with live streams. Yeah. Because at that yeah. point, you lose those viewers, you never get them back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And this was the second or third year we were doing the Oscars. Yeah. It wasn't the first year. Yeah. It was the second. And it was ABC Disney, and they were waiting because it happened very quickly hmm. where the Oscar stream was taken down yep. yeah. right away. And I, I, the reason I bring this up is because obviously it got up later. We won this because we were in the right, but you don't get those viewers back. And so we were really upset. 
But so many of you, so many people in that moment, you joined up at Mug Club. You went right to the loudestcrowder.com slash Mug Club site. It was great. And it then we had, really I think we had live stream over, at, did we at, at Mug Club or was it the Blaze? At that point, we didn't have live yeah. streaming, I don't think, at the no, Blaze. No, we didn't. Right. It was still on Facebook, I it believe. It was on and Facebook. Then we, went, yeah. then we went to Instagram, 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 just with my cell phone video. Right, yeah. Yeah. And the amount of viewers was shocking. So yeah. not only yeah. did you watch, but once it was removed, you guys said, you know what, I'm going to sign up. So many people actually yeah. double signed up yeah. or renewed their subscriptions for exactly. three years yeah. just yeah, because they saw um, the foul play. And uh, it was just something where we said, oh, wow, okay, we really yeah. need no, to I mean, do right by these moment, supporters. It was a moment that the the fans and the people that are watching saw it in real time. Yeah. They, you know, they, they see us yeah. saying it later or, uh, you know, like, oh, we got, we got this taken down. We're losing monetization yeah. on these videos. Yeah. And that's something that's kind of like in the ether almost to yeah. them. Right. But they saw it in real time as yeah, they're watching exactly. the show us get taken down so yeah, i think uh, it was yeah. a big moment i saw moment. it as, as the uh the tip of the iceberg is where people are finally seeing what the problem is and they actually had a moment to glimpse the entire iceberg right yeah right? not just the little part that they see when we talk about it here and yeah. asking for support for mug club and the very best fans in those moments stepped up and yeah. that's yeah. you know every time we talk about mug club and what mug club does like literally the show cannot happen this because is the only we have no yeah, patreon without, exactly. we have no right. GoFundMe because yeah. you see what no. they do with yeah. conservatives we said we only want to be funded by you and a few select sponsors which we'll get to in a minute we've really only ha can i talk about the sponsors that have dropped us no <laughs> no 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 i, I view that as a turning point too because uh, you know people can use a gimmick like oh they're after us man you gotta right. support us you're the only way and i know that we tell them like hey guys like this is the only way that this exists is if you are a part of mug club yeah, yeah. that showed everybody yeah it showed them just you know like you said live but it it also gave them this feeling of like, oh my gosh, if if they want to take conservative voices off of this plat, they can. Yeah, they can right. just do stuff like this to them. They'll just screw them somehow. Hard. They'll figure yeah. out a way. And so we've got to get around. And it. they really screwed the pooch with that one because you know the big legal term you can tell, I guess, educate the audience is whether the content is transformative. Right. right. So the fair use question is, are you transforming the underlying copyrighted content? And there's a few other factors, and transformative being one of the bigger ones. And of course, you know, over the, uh, you know, commenting on an event that's occurring and costumes. And a set. And oh man! Guests. Yeah. We added it up. I think it was like twelve percent. The, the actual Oscar stream was up for twelve percent of yeah. the time. Yeah. Right. It, it, was it was so tiny, obvious. Tiny percentage. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and then you guys got us back up and stronger than ever. Okay. Yeah. This brings us to number two. This is one that many of you may have forgotten about because it happened I love uh, it. a little. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This, this was my favorite. This, this, this was literally favorite? my favorite. This one. might well, be my favorite. Because one there were also really some internal. One issues that went on with there, where we had some other internal counsel who were saying that we shouldn't do this in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And I says, Bill took my side, where he said, no, no, you can do this. Absolutely. Really? Yeah. So Shia LaBeouf, like, no, yeah. if you yeah. don't, okay, number number so two, fun. when we were sued by Shia LaBeouf, context. <laughs> <laughs> and Muhammad. Hey, 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 you yeah. know, the, 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 you're bearing the lead here. We beat Shia We LaBeouf. beat Shia LaBeouf yeah. in a yeah. lawsuit. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So he did the he will not divide us. You remember after Donald yeah. Trump became president, just he will not divide us. He will not divide us. And so he set up this right. camera in a public space in uh, New York, outside of some kind of art museum, but yep. it was yeah. out in a public yeah. space where yeah. anyone could go district. and say he will not divide us yeah. <laughs> and so we're like okay so this is up there this is a stream that's up there not many people were watching it but it was yeah. you know making some headlines and so i said hey i have an idea how about we go to new york and we broadcast yeah. our entire show from shia labeouf's <laughs> stream <laughs> and here's the thing this is one thing i will say again with uh, with with mug uh, club and what you guys do that that support us um anyone could just go there and go Bleh! Shia LaBeouf sucks. Blah, 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 blah. That doesn't yeah, help anybody, right? right? And this yeah. is what a lot of conservatives do. They ask you for money on Patreon or on a GoFundMe, and then they just go out and say something incendiary. No, right. we said, how can we actually, we, it started with, we wanted to build the entire set, bring it out and set up. <laughs> right. And then I think legally we said that would actually be impeding traffic in a public mm -hmm. space. Yep. Might be a fair So this is why I love half Asian Bill, because he said, that's probably a no, but what if? And so what we did was we created these sort of almost like a snare drum. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Soundboard. It's like a cigarette lady. Uh, yeah, yes, exactly. Exactly, like a yeah. cigarette lady. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a desk with a microphone and mugs. And we went there to Shia LaBeouf's live stream and broadcast our entire yeah. show. And also, God love him, Dean Kane was there to uh, yeah, fill in right. host for yeah. Good Morning America. <laughs> that's right. He, he stayed up. an extra day so that while we were doing the He Will Not Divide Us live stream, and now we start having fans flooding in, right? Yeah. Security yeah. and officers going, What's going on here? We have Dean Kane. Like, hey, hey, <laughs> Dean Kane. <laughs> and we have Dean Kane on Shia LaBeouf's He Will Not Divide Us uh, live stream. And a I side note it. from Dean Kane. So good. Dean Kane is yeah. the kind of guy who makes you very sad because he's so, he's just, he has everything. He's very 
very good looking. He's very smart. And when you uh, spend time with him, you realize he's actually really quick and kind of kind of acid. He's an acid tongued Asian. Oh wow! Yeah. He um, at one point, I, I just remember this. I, I have a necklace mug and microphone and I'm sitting we're in a Mexican restaurant it's right around the corner from you will not divide us and uh, I'm getting ready and Dean Kane is sitting there with me and he's eating he has an entire bowl of guacamole he's on a second bowl of guacamole mm, wow. Wow. Guacamole? and a big ass margarita it's like, it looks like pink with salt around the rim and I'm trying you know before the show I'm focusing on a million different things I'm like I'm about to go out I'm going to get my ass kicked by Shia LaBeouf and so you know, I, I, I mean you know like body shots he can't yeah, reach yeah, up yeah, not just, really. just do the pullback there you go um, and <laughs> I go, oh, wait, 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 sorry. I go, I'm sorry, Dean, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't realize no one's here to, with you at the restaurant because you're going to be here for 20 minutes when we start the show. Uh, do you need any help? Do you, do you need anything? And he goes, no. I, are, really? Are you sure? He goes, yeah. You know what? I'm sure. And he's, he takes a nacho, guacamole, a sip of margarita. He goes, because I'm a grown-ass fucking man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Love the king. And I, and I oh, like, awesome. This is my life. <laughs> this is it. Um, so, so we, do you remember in the beginning of the live stream when you were doing it? There were actually some people who were not fans of the show, didn't know the show came right. up, and you were giving them mugs, and they no, were. No, we like, did that the day before. Oh yeah, that was the day. The before. day they before, were we like, gave oh, them mugs with so hot quality. chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> well, these Look are actually really good. Nice. So this yeah. mug, yes. it's amazing. Yeah, we went down there. We gave them mugs full of coffee and hot chocolate, and so all these people are on Shia LaBeouf's stream going like, "Yeah, shout out to Lotto with Crowded Guys that gave us this coffee and, uh, mug club. You guys should." Join. Uh, and you know he's just so, so pissed that well, you did this, right? Well, he got pissed, and right away, they basically came after us to sue us. It was, yeah. was LaBeouf, Ronco, Turner, I think was the mm. firm or whatever, and it was, I think, th the lesser LaBeouf, it's Ronco, other, Turner, it was Ronco. Yeah, it's the other c creators, they, you know, they each share in the alleged right. copyright. So. And uh, he was threatening to sue, yeah. uh, and of course, we one, we argued that it was transformative, but the reason he was really upset was because it was the highest viewed portion <laughs> ever of the yes. He Will Not Divide Us uh -huh. live stream. They yeah. saw a spike, They're like, Jealous. we gotta stop, we gotta put a stop to this. Yeah. And then after that, that's what spurred, they moved the He Will Not they Divide Us it. to other right. places, and all these people on Reddit, oh, yeah. and I guess back then 4chan, would triangulate yeah. where they set up the new camera, and they, it just became a game of taking it down. Yeah. Yes, it was like capture was the flag. Great. Yeah, so it was uh, Love it. pretty, it was, it was good, so, you know, Pursued by Shia LaBeouf, uh, his guys, and we won. Number one, and we have a plus one, but number one should be no surprise oh, to yes. anyone, and oh, this yeah. is really in the last uh, this last year, uh, the number one controversy that we've had here at uh, Loud with Crowder is, yeah, the Vox adpocalypse. Boom. Yeah. And I think, and I want to get all of your thoughts on this uh, here, and I want you to let me know where, where you were, what you remember from the Vox adpocalypse. I mean, we had talked a lot about being demonetized. We had most of our videos had been demonetized. We'd been throttled hell, yeah. where our videos weren't showing up in subscriber feeds. It was like 90% feeds. of videos. Right. Um, but that, that being said, we didn't have this kind of a consequence ever no. before. And right. it all of a sudden burst out this highlight reel, this hit reel on me. Uh, I remember the Hodge twins saying that they were like, yeah, I was seeing you and your dad. You were on Don Lemon's show going, quick, quick, quick. And John Lim is saying, disgusting. <laughs> um, and uh, this actually, the reason this is the biggest controversy is not only because you guys stepped up and again supported us uh, to a yeah. degree that, that we had never seen up until then. Insane. Um, but this changed policy for YouTube. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Uh, because we did not violate the policies, which by the way, New York Times were looking for that retraction. We coming for the Jew. Um, we didn't violate any policy at all, but people were so mad, and people really weren't mad, it was a leftist hate mob right. yeah. um, trying to go after us, they demonetized us, and even though well, most of our videos didn't run afoul of demonetization. And I will tell you this, I've talked about this kind of on air, but not so much. When YouTube called after this was going on, the, the, the highlight reel, and it was you know trending everywhere, right. yeah. and I was on the phone, uh, Half Asian Bill was not with me, you were somewhere else, mm -hmm. and they, they were reading a statement. Remember? Yep. It was these people yeah. from YouTube, faceless, nameless. They didn't give names. We had no idea who they were. Well, and just to be clarified, we asked for their names, and they said they felt uncomfortable yes. even identifying who they were, wow. these people giving the message. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they started reading a statement, and the first portion of the statement read like they were going to remove our channel from YouTube. Yeah. And then it ended, but it, then it ended up being we're just going to demonetize you. And I was like, well, <laughs> okay, well, yeah. all right, we're not making that much money from you guys anyway. Right. Uh, but at first, for about a good twenty-three seconds, I thought, oh no, oh yeah. no, I they're going to have to switch because these angry <laughs> yeah. gay folks at Vox are are are, are trying <laughs> to manipulate policy. And I remember the room started spinning, and my knees went out, and I I uh, I, I thought I was having a heart attack. Really? Uh -huh. I remember really? I thought I was having. A, it turns out it was just like a 
I don't even think it was a panic attack. I don't know what I've, I've sort of had panic issues before in the past, but this was actually, uh, I just felt like I couldn't breathe and the room was spinning. Yeah. And I fell back and I remember thinking just, oh my gosh, everyone yeah. works for us. What are we going to do at this point? Because we, we hadn't really been super public about it. We hadn't fought back right. yet. Yeah. Yeah. This right. was before we had done the apology video. So I was <laughs> yeah. thinking if they just remove our channel, then it goes away in the dark. You know, yeah. we wanted this and to be a knows. firefight yeah. in public. Yeah. And then when they said, okay, you're just demonetized. I mean, that was, for me was a relief. Like, whoa! Okay, good. Right, you know, good. like I just like the money, Snickers commercial where someone put <laughs> just shoved one in my mouth. Which, by the way, don't do if someone's having a seizure. Do no, not no, shove no, a yeah, Snickers in his mouth. Nope, not good. If he's having Show a seizure. And uh, remember, we came back in, and I came back into the room. I don't think you guys knew how rattled I was, and I said, "Okay, this is what we're gonna do." <laughs> and we did the apology video that was 16 minutes of insulting yes. everybody. It was going through was all of awesome. our worst bits, great. all yeah. of our most offensive jokes, and we even threw some new ones in there for good measure. <laughs> just in <laughs> case. Yeah, we just, just wanted to be careful. Me. And uh, you guys joined up so much to the point where when YouTube spoke with us afterwards, going, do you use YouTube memberships? We said, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I, I do like, uh, uh, you know, Vice News, they reported that uh, the whole thing just made the show stronger. Yes, oh, they, they were furious far. about that it. Was and it absolutely yeah. did. Yeah, it made it a whole yeah. lot stronger. Um, we had more subscribers than ever. You guys signed up. And by the way, there could be another Vox Adpocalypse. But this is what really stood out to me. This was the first time that um, someone had done an all-out assault. Make no mistake, this was something that was a long time in the making. Yeah. From yeah. Vox and Media Matters. Poorly produced They all. polled all of the worst things they could pull. Yeah. Everyone, the Young Turks, New York Times, um, uh, I, I don't know if it was Samantha B. some of the late night hosts, they all wanted to make me out to be this monster, which, right. like I said, it yeah. sent more people to our show. This was the first show that had that happen, and we won. And we weren't yeah. deplatformed. Yeah. And I will say this: there have been unjust deplatformings that we've gone in, and we've, we can't do it for everybody. But we all general rule is: unless someone is breaking the law, they shouldn't be deplatformed. Yeah. Okay? Right. Yeah. But um, it was uh, it was one of those things where um, I forgot what I was about to say. But go uh, ahead. well, I think I, I think know. this was probably for me because I was on the outside. Because a lot of people don't know, I don't I don't stay around the studios all day. I come in for the shows. We do yeah. prep and some stuff. Yeah. I was on the outside looking in, and I was really concerned because I started seeing stuff happening on Twitter before I had got a chance to talk to you guys. I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, like yeah. this guy's really going after us. And I wasn't worried that he was upset. I was worried that everybody seemed to be kind of like, yeah, this is a bad, like big yeah. players were coming around him. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, this is like a like concerted wave, effort yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. to try to take the show down. And not right. to mention that Vox was invested in by NBC Universal, which right. is one of the yeah. biggest media yeah. conglomerates ever. And it's they like, did, yeah. they're the ones who put on the Recode conference where Susan Wojcicki was talking about right. it. Yeah. Right. And uh, Fox, they, right they were behind her. right behind yeah, her. They yeah, were framing right. it as though we violated, yeah. they consistently tried to frame it as though we had violated policies. Yeah. And even Susan Wojcicki, to her credit, was like, they didn't violate policies, but it's borderline. And I and I hate the fact, obviously, we weren't looking to change policy so that more content is borderline, and yeah. a lot of non-political channels were affected. But not only did our audience come to our defense, but also the entire YouTube community. Yeah. And people who hate me, rightfully yeah. so. Yeah, I saw I saw a ton of people that were like, I'm not even political, I don't watch political stuff, right. but I'm going to go become a mug clubber because this is yeah. messed up. Like, this yeah. is not right. I, I thought that the really exciting thing is that essentially YouTube couldn't operate under a cover of darkness anymore with right. regards to their policy and how they were doing yeah. things. So the whole result of it was that people got to see more of what was actually happening again, kind of seeing the whole right. iceberg. But then the other part was the number of times I've run into people or like we were at the a &M show and they said the turning point for them and understanding and like actually checking out the content yeah. was saying, okay, I saw the clip video. I've seen some of the tweets and the stories. I'm going to go watch this for right. myself. Yeah. These are right. thinking young adults, uh, you know, teenagers, older adults who are all saying, I was like, I'm going to go check and see whether the yeah. news I'm being told is correct. So they went and watched the videos and came away thinking, yeah. I, I'm i shocked I'm not already a subscriber. Right. And yeah. they signed up for Muck. Well, I think three main points, actually, that I, that I wanted to touch on. One was, I'm actually really grateful because they've already done their legwork and trying to find the best. So it's all out there. Yeah. <laughs> Just go watch the Vox highlight reel. There you go. Those, that's done. the worst to me, baby. Until the apology video, which was, of course, worse. Which, which was insanely so funny. So they did the highlight reel, right? And that, uh, that sent more people uh, to us uh, right. at this point. And I think something that did save us with YouTube is word kind of two things that you'll hear if you work in this industry. One is that we work harder than every other program out there. Everyone here works really hard. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily the most talented or gifted person, but I will say that it's it's pretty known that I work hard and everyone in this team works hard. Yeah, we all absolutely. expect to work hard. Another thing is people know that we have more subscribers than any other uh, uh, 
like exclusive pay over the top service out there period yeah it's well known that yeah. mug club is the biggest period outside of pornography in the early aughts you guys have signed up on mass <laughs> to the point where if youtube were to have removed us still many tens of thousands of views would be on our response on mug club and that right. would look even worse yeah so i think that forced the hand a little bit where they were like "Ooh, you know if we remove this this isn't someone who's just going to go away with a few hundred yeah. people who are right. doing a patreon these are a lot of people who are going to be mobilizing and i think the reason that we weren't deplatformed was and it wasn't just because of us trying to refuse to apologize. I apologize all the time when I'm wrong. Yeah. But we didn't we knew that we weren't wrong and because of your support we knew we had to do right by you and stay stand fast and, and stand by our principles. And so the apology video rather than a lot of people who either apologize in a soft way or kind of make it about please don't remove us, we did the apology video which was okay. Here you go. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> yeah. And no one had that's done that. I love that. about this what? show. Yeah. And what they missed is that said Vox guys videos were so horrible and that's what we were yeah. commenting on in the entire thing and it just kept coming back up. It wasn't it was even the Vox gold. guy. We did plenty of rebuttals. That no, also the, saved us. We did rebuttals yeah. to Vox where it didn't involve this guy. No. Yeah. Right. He but was the videos that were coming out were so guy. bad that we were just we had we had to respond to them. Yep. yep. Uh, okay, and then uh, that's the uh, that's the top 7. Then there's a plus yeah. 1. This is one I will personally speaking which personally apologize for because I lied to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? I did. Now, is this B-roll or a clip that we're throwing? A clip. To? Okay. Oh. How long is a clip? It's uh, it's two minutes. Oh, it's two, two minutes. minutes. Okay. Yeah. So this controversy here, I will, uh, uh, by the way, hit the notification bell uh, if you're watching on YouTube because apparently, you know, subscriptions don't mean a whole lot right now. Hit all notifications. And this mm. is a good time to tell you Crowder Bits is a channel yeah. where we upload other content, sketches, all that kind of stuff. And of course, iTunes, I guess that's Apple Play now. Podcast. Podcast. Yeah, podcast. 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 Yeah. And Mug Club is the main thing. But I lied to you guys for years. Yeah. Years. I used you and abused you when I told you that we were, and we hashtag never daily, that we were never going to go daily with this show. And I did so, and I would say that our exploratory committee was definitely never going to allow us to go daily. Full disclosure, I apologize. I was doing that all along, uh, planning on going daily. Oh. Um, and you deserve better. But you didn't get it. You got daily instead. <laughs> and that's also something that a lot of people don't know. If you're not a member of Mug Club, you only get a clip on YouTube. Uh, but people at Mug yeah. Club, they get Ash get Wednesday. They get deal. all kinds of yeah. stuff. So this is, a, this is the, the timeline of the Never Daily. Yeah. Okay, I apologize for this. I did it. I was wrong. I'm you a work wrong. in progress. Proudly introducing the Mug Club. Louder with Crowder has gone daily. <laughs> We are two wild and overrated sketch artists. They really did. Ah, shit. Oh, <laughs> 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 shit. <laughs> 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 Your screen's, your screen's not frozen. I just wanted to mess with you guys. Uh, you'll notice it's very different. There's no standard intro for, for today's yeah. show. That's because yeah. this is the first installment of a bi is bi-weekly every other week. I don't know if I'm yeah. taking every, your every questions. My girlfriend is nine, my girlfriend of nine months. Thanks oh, Thanks a lot for the small font, Johnny boy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you saved a hell of a lot of ink ass <laughs> Looking for dead people. Jeez. Wow. Where? They sent 14 year old. This is wow. faces of death. Is this Nazi Germany? <laughs> oh my God! She, she's forgiven her husband after he hired a hitman to kill her. So she's bad at picking out husbands. He's really bad at picking out assassins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want to be this. <laughs> you made us this. Well, let's just make this an enjoy. This. Well, just sit back and, and talk. That kind of harkens back to the radio days, which is when you started yeah. following uh, Quarter Black Garrett. Everybody, go blow it in general. Don't right. blow smoke at me, you little bastards. I'm going to smell it. Whoa! Shut <laughs> up! Ah! Every joke that makes the show, or every bit, we probably, yeah. what would you say we write? Quarter Black oh. Yeah. Like, at least. Four, five, six get cut like every day. Yes, this thank is, God. This definitely has a Courtney flair to this it, right? This is not going on YouTube. Would it, it would be immediately demonetized. Yeah. Let's have Griff uh, read number number six. Pitch Jeffrey Epstein vehicles. Number six. I can't read. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Griff. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, you know what? I'm actually going to make the first uh, Thursday ever Ash Wednesday. Oh, oh no, man. What? Yeah, look at this. It's exciting. I like it. It looks like a nice cigar, too. Is that no, a it doesn't. It looks like Is that the one that had the electrical tape as a band? It did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. Someone else carry only, the mic here while I can get best. this going. What's going Go on? Go, Bill. So, uh, I, for people who don't ha- haven't subscribed to Mug Club yet, you're terrible. But second, <laughs> um, we love you anyway. The fun thing about the Ash Says Wednesday, Mr. Coronavirus. Right? Hey, yeah. hey, hey, Mr. Hey, A2 hey. receptors genetic proclivity toward hey, the pandemic. If yep. Trump wants to have another trade war with China, we will keep bringing the coronavirus. <laughs> oh <laughs> wow, that's, that's what they on the table. So the the thing I love most about the the kind of the stuff that's behind um, the the paywall and and Mug Club and it's available is we get a lot more in depth. We talk about yeah. a lot of different topics. We're really engaging with a lot of different fan questions yeah. and comments and stuff like that. And you really get to see another side of, of everything that's done here yeah. and yeah. more more of what a lot of people like about what they see on YouTube. Right. Um, but like I said, we can't do any of the rest of it without Mug Club. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, and I, I sorry, I tossed that thing. It was going to be a timeline of the never daily, but uh, we told you we were never get going daily for a long time. And I will say this, the reason why, all joking aside, was because we knew that at the time we didn't have, I knew that we didn't have the capacity to do a daily show. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so we launched on election night when we were going daily. <laughs> That's right. You were with me. That was a Jeez. long, long night. That and was a long 18-hour drive yeah. across the country it afterwards. Was. Yes. Um, <laughs> where we knew that if we had enough sign-ups, and that was actually a bit of a risk. Because we said, Huge. okay, if we announce that we're going daily, maybe enough people will sign up where we can afford the resources we it. need to go daily. Yeah. And we hit that number within the first like four hours of election night. Yeah. And um, and again, like I I own 100% of this, and you know we worked with CRTV. Now we have a partnership with the Blaze, where you get access to all of their catalog, and of course they help handle this this back end. These apps that now work really well. The Blaze app is just yeah. stuff that we were never able to afford. So we've been able to do this without having to take money from Al Jazeera. <laughs> yeah. Though I mean, it was they offered keep, many times. They've never knocking. taken outside money. Yeah. That's something people don't understand either. It's you, and then we have uh, partnership agreements. You know where we either give a percentage or get a percentage. Yeah, uh, from some other folks. Okay, so we do have to uh, go on a lot, a lot of mo- a lot of memory lanes to stroll down here. Yeah. How many memory Honestly, lanes are yeah. there in the United States? It's got to be at least one. I think there's more than Ten. Main Street. Ten, maybe twelve. Mm, yeah, who knows? <laughs> okay, Mr. Can't Bird Flu. So, um, it's something that's relatively new. <laughs> We've done quite Sars. a few of these, and actually we'll be releasing yeah. the album soon uh, Ooh, at, yeah. uh, at the Everybody's Blaze, and I don't know if it's going to be at Spotify or wherever, but um, I would so buy we've that. done enough musical parodies. We started off where we would do them every now and then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just intermittently. Sometimes they'd be on a Thursday show. Sometimes they'd be on a you know Monday or Tuesday show behind the paywall, you know, Mug Club. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know I say Mug Club. So I need to say, because like, you haven't seen it, but I'm talking about this content. Right. Yeah. And uh, then, actually, we started doing more of them when Audio Wade came in, because Audio Wade so is talented. a skilled singer. Fun. And uh, also able to produce some music. Yeah. And so before that, I would have to write all the lyrics and then send off to this other guy. Yeah. He's unbelievable, but he's abroad. He's remote. And so it would take a long time. So we, we started doing more of these musical parodies. And uh, we hear you. We appreciate you. We are always trying to do more of them. But again, some of these music videos take a lot of production value. Yeah. So a lot well, of time before we go, what's, what's your favorite track that we've done as far as music? Um, the uh, What was the one we did in the montage earlier um, where I'm in the back playing the guitar? The, uh, is it Dr. Oh, Trump? Brother, where art thou? Oh, oh Brother, where yeah, art thou? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was Dr. Trump, just because the, the costumes yeah. were outrageous. That one like, was fun. The, the lyrics were awesome. That, that one was pretty too. fun. So that was, that yeah. was and we good. shot that here yeah. at the new studio before, before it was, it was the studio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. We're like, we need a warehouse. Was, yeah. Wait, we yeah. have a warehouse. We have one. Because until we get new Mug Club subscribers, we can't afford to furnish it. Audio Wade, you're the music guy. I think Nirvana is my favorite one. Oh, yeah. It was pretty good. It's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. And I do like a long time ago because it was kind of raw. I like the Rocket Man Kim Jong Un just because that of, was awesome. Just because of uh, Gerald A. as Dennis Rodman, he looks so much like a white Dennis he Rodman does. that we had you back on the show as Dennis Rodman. I wrote yeah. it into the show. I'm like, uh, I don't know what this. I don't know. I don't know how we get there, yeah. but it ends with Gerald A. as Dennis Rodman. Yeah, I get to the studio and they're like, uh, Yeah, you have a costume. I'm like, What? I have a what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, okay, I've got a correction. My favorite one is Audio Wade and Got an Itch Girl. Oh, that one's that, pretty good. I mean, good I've probably watched it 50 times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, also, you, you yeah. got Quarter Black with his swivel hips over there. Of course. There. It's there amazing. Course. He Thank steals the show oh. with those hips. I just forgot about that. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, Father Mother. His hips. Oh, yeah, Father Mother. That was awesome. His hips are mostly straightforward, but occasionally they fib. So, <laughs> this is, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let us know what other musical parodies you would like to see. This is an episode where we want to hear from you. We want your feedback, and uh, we want to see your comments, because that will help dictate the direction right. of the show. Let us know. Here are our favorite musical parodies. City. I 
said welcome to A2 City Every place, everywhere we go Yeah, they want to try to ban our show They call me And there we uh, go. Yes, uh, there you nice. would think I was the one who was quarter black. No, that was, that was pretty good. <laughs> this one. It's nice. this one, and you just thought he was Mexican. All right, we yeah. are going to have to go actually to a, a commercial break really quickly. And uh, before I should have said this, this is where we're going to have our guests. Ooh, our guests yeah. have either sent in a video or we will call in here, and I think we'll actually have some videos from you before we go into our favorite commercials. We should mention our sponsors. Of course, Walther is a wonderful sponsor. They've been with us for a yeah, long yes. time. And Fantastic. Black Rifle Coffee. Unbelievable. Um, I think ExpressVPN is more recent, and uh, Bill didn't want me to say it, but a long time ago we got dropped by Audible, so screw those guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, Audible. It, it, he wasn't involved, and Look, we were dropped so quickly. Man, hey, it was man. one week. They were like, he actually does what? It's job security, okay. <laughs> yes. There you go. True, yeah. Uh, so enjoy the commercials, and uh, here are some guests. Hey, walk out of my face. So bad, In your mind. Our world is increasingly ruled by technology. Information moves faster than the speed of light. But how do you know that you and your personal information are safe? That's why you should protect yourself with the latest in cybersecurity technology, a sticky note. Are you worried that it might leave you open to hackers, spies, geoblocks, IP detection, ad targeting, NSA habit tracking, traffic logs, third-party microphone access, and theft of your personal data? We've got you covered with a sticky note. And if you're concerned about all that other stuff, there's always ExpressVPN. Stephen, congratulations on an incredible milestone. When I first heard about it, I figured it was maybe a thousands episode, something like that, but one billion views, that's the real deal, man. I'm surprised that they're still allowing you on the platform, frankly. Well, it just goes to show you what you can achieve with a little bit of effort, ingenuity, and a small, rent-free space in your parents' basement. I suppose we all need our hobbies. Steven! Mahmoud here from ISIS headquarters to wish you congratulations on your one billionth murder. What do you mean, view? It kind of reminds me of an adage in the business, which is, if you never leave the stage, eventually somebody will clap just so you go. Congratulations on getting a billion downloads or views or whatever. A grown man having your daddy call people to congratulate you and tell you a good job. Congratulations on what I hear is one billion people that are now watching your steaming program, Crowder on Chowder. That's uh, quite an achievement. Well, the coffee is delicious, but you should uh, should still keep your eyes on the road. Really happy to announce our uh, our latest sponsor, Black Rifle Coffee. And the company does more than just coffee, by the way. They're veteran-owned and operated, and uh, they actually still actively serve those in the veteran community today. So all of November, for every bag or box of coffee rounds that you purchase, Black Rifle Coffee will donate another bag to uh, active deployed members of our armed services. And something else, unlike other companies who claim small batch or premium coffee, Black Rifle Coffee isn't roasted until after you place your 
your order, which is really important. A lot of people don't know this. Coffee is a bean. And like other beans and legumes, I'm not exactly sure what that is, a legume, but it goes bad. Right, so if you've been drinking stale coffee, taste the difference for yourself and support a company that has the best product out there and does a lot of good work. Go to blackriflecoffee.com slash Crowder. And if you enter Crowder as a discount code, you'll receive 20% off your first order. Uh, blackrifle.com, blackriflecoffee.com slash Crowder. Almost got it. But now you've been loud to over a billion listeners. This is crazy, my friend. But you know what? You are telling the truth and the truth will set this country free Congratulations, up to two billion. Woo woo. Congratulations from the Wolford family. Keep up the good work and uh, keep defending our rights. But I guess a billion is good. I mean, it means quality. All you need to do is look at a McDonald's sign to realize that a billion is the number you're aiming for. But I'm happy for you. Um, I mean, I'd be happier if it was my channel that had a billion views, but I'm happy for you because you have me on your show. From everyone here at Walter Arms, to everybody there at Louder with Crowder, congratulations on one billion views. Your one billionth view, and I just wanna say truly, from the bottom of my heart, uh, this is a sign of the end of days. I believe this is actually in the Bible. You were mentioned by name. <laughs> Me. What does that magnificent hand-etched mug do? Oh, that, well, that, unfortunately, is Mug Club, the current hour of our existence and the objective of your next mission. See, Mug Club has been spreading truth, entertainment, and encouraging the American way. Furthermore, even more alarmingly, they've been able to bypass our assistance from the YouTube census, able to reach, communicate with their listeners directly. Your objective will be to find who is at the center of this Mug Club, Extract any information by any means necessary and destroy it. Stephen, congrats on one billion views. Um, just to be clear, that's not even a fraction of the world population, so it's... Stephen Crowder, congratulations on passing over a billion views despite shadow banning censorship and all the attacks you've gone through. But I am here to criticize you. It's not a good thing to joke around and have humor. It hurts a lot of people's feelings and it can be confused. When you told me you were gonna to get to a billion views, I didn't believe you. But then you explained it was really simple. All you needed was a Russian bot farm and you could have artificial views into the billions. And I gotta say, it is remarkable. Crowder's got a billion views. What a pile of crap that is. Only because he's paying Google off it. Hey, Steven, congratulations. Hi, Steven, how are you doing? A billion, one billion YouTube views. I'm just sitting down here in my basement bunker. Oh, Uh, thank you so much to yeah. everybody. Thank you, Rand Paul. Thank you, Mahmoud yeah. Al Mahmoud. Thank you, James McKee. <laughs> thank you, Glenn Beck. Thank you, Mark Ripto, Jocko, Jim Norton, Dang all of Ted you. Cruz. Thank you. We really so appreciate yeah. it. I already said Ted Cruz. I said it again. And during the break, my half Asian <laughs> lawyer, uh, Bill Richmond, said uh, couldn't get two billion. Yeah, really couldn't. couldn't. I think we're going to skip it. I think that's why he said it. Yeah, we're just going to go to three. Just, yeah, lightning we're skip pass right, right there to forty-five. Bill. Well, we're going to do our best. <laughs> and by the way, we are also going. To, we are going to do a special live stream live with your tweets when we uh, pass the Young Turk subscribers because oh, they've been. And then afterwards, nice. we'll yeah. never talk about them again because you <laughs> yeah. cannot punch yes. down. And yeah, this is course. one thing too. When we say a billion views in this channel, like I said it's closer to two if you add up Mug Club. The rest of it. This is with one piece of content on YouTube per day. It's not like That's, a lot of these other networks yeah. that are doing 50 pieces or 30 pieces. And yeah. like, this is, we're, 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 it's incredible. We are so grateful. Yeah. Um, and a big part of this, we will say that bring, the, the big part that uh, brings in the most amount of new subscribers here on YouTube, because, you know, search results we've talked about, a lot of these algorithms aren't necessarily favorable to us. We've had a lot of problems That's running nice our videos as ads. Yeah. <laughs> well, the problem is like, how do we reach new audiences? Right. Like, well, yeah. people search, Stephen Crowder changed my mind for the longest Doesn't time. I think they fixed, didn't, didn't show up. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were no longer able to like run videos as ads. So it's just right. like, how how do you reach new people? Uh, the thing that does cut through and helps us reach new people uh, more than anything else are what we call sort of super videos. 
And these are videos where we go on location, like Antifa we've talked about. Yeah. Um, and there are two two really ones that stick out. Change My Mind is obviously right. within yeah. the last three or four years. And then a subsidiary of that, Crowder Confronts, which usually occurred yeah. because someone threatened to kill me at a Change My Mind. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's You two didn't start the fight. For one. Yeah. <laughs> Double the Steven. Um, so, uh, but these super videos, what often happens is they go viral. They sort of become a news story as opposed to yeah. commenting on the news. You know, they became a news story in and of themselves. And that ultimately leads to more people subscribing to the channel. And here's the thing. I appreciate how much uh, everyone out there understands is sometimes if you join Mug Club, we'll have like a week where we maybe miss two shows or something right, because yeah. so usually we'll pre-tape, uh, but sometimes we can't. We just have to run and go do a hidden camera deal right. where we don't have 140 something uh, writers or staff like yeah. Jay Leno has or 100 something like Seth Meyers have. We have 12 people here and I think 15 if yeah. you count part-timers abroad. And so we just have to pack up everything, go out and tape a super video where we can't do this show and that. And we would never be able to afford to do these super videos if not for you. I mean, to give you an idea, yeah. doing like the change my mind you'll see in front of the White House, that's yeah. getting 12 yeah. people to Washington, D.C., mm. uh, several hundred pounds of equipment, making sure that we have security when we get there, mm -hmm. getting travel back, not to mention the editing software, food, hotel, typically for two days. I mean, you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars often to do these. And um, we wouldn't be able to do it if not for Mug Club. And I know it's one of those things that sometimes you don't see because these go up on YouTube. But Mug Club is paying for that. It's paying for us yeah. to reach new people because that cuts through the algorithms. And I can't thank you enough. We've actually shot a few that are in the hopper, and we're planning mm. on doing more of these in the coming uh, coming year. Coronavirus has made it a little bit tough. You know what I'm talking bit, about, yeah. Hatch Bill. Yikes. Uh, but <laughs> no more China trip. Uh, let's go uh, right now to a montage of actually uh, top moments from funded by you on location, super videos. Thanks again so much. Hi, my name is Steven Crowder. He will not divide us. He will not divide us. He will not divide us. Okay, okay. This is not a bad line. Okay. This is bloody guys. We're gonna brush it. You know what bullshit? What do you think would happen if we went into a Muslim bakery and asked for a gay wedding cake? You can write on it, Ben loves yeah, Steven yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. And have our hands yeah. maybe holding. No. Can I get a gun here without a background check? No. I thought at gun shows you didn't have to do a background check. Oh, no. No, no, no. What you're asking is for somebody to commit a felony. So was it because of the magazine capacity? No, look at it. Yeah, it does look really sinister. Would you be on board with common sense gun reform? Depends on what that means. Do you own any firearms? Shotgun. Well, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to Detroit. We have a nice two-story in the Detroit area. Cozy, rustic. You guys have papers? I need papers. He's gonna call ice, you motherfuckers. Wait till these hobos get a load of me. The price of my walls, not a price that you're willing to pay. Yes, bitch, yes, bitch, yes, bitch, slay. Are you familiar with the term manspreading? We'll see what women think. Using our homemade apparatus. I get why men sit like this. Yeah? I mean, I'm not shocked by it. <laughs> I've decided to go through the socialized Canadian healthcare system to show you exactly what it's really like. This what does that triage. mean? That means we wait and we get judged by the nurse to decide how important we are. But there's a private clinic, would you like to pay? Wait, hold up. A government employee recommending a private clinic? Take the knife. How much of a... Yeah, we gotta go. We got two APs coming. McDonald's here with Fox 13 News. We've been tracking Antifa for a long time. He was just down there at President Circle and they were handing out sharp objects to stab people with, said they had someone coming with an AK. Why did it take two late night hosts, comedians, to find this out? We took a hidden camera to an abortion clinic in Colorado where late term abortions have been legal for years to show you exactly what it is that they, we, and you are talking about. This woman was going to end her 32 week, that's eight months her eight-month-old baby's life. Hi, I'm Stephanie with all the frequencies of the feminism. Hold on your 
Stacy. Oh. I'm Stephanie, and I'm pretty sure I'm pregnant. Yes. Yeah. So you're definitely not positive. Really, we wanted to talk with someone about about Plan B. Yeah. Nice mug, man. Louder, louder with Prado, man. Shout out to them, man. Uh, you need you said to stop filming. You need to call security. I'm just asking a question. You. You're gonna have to leave. Well, I think that it's time to go. Okay. Um, because People are triggered. Got it. Hey YouTube, what you're about to watch is a new segment we call Change My Mind. Pretty simple, uh, we go out and set up in public and uh, pick a topic, and we actually allow people from other points of view to come up and proactively change my mind. You are more than welcome to change my mind if you think I'm wrong. I am open to having my mind changed. Fetus is literally a parasite. Like it is sucking the life from a mother. Yeah. Every single day. Like that's literally what happens. That's not even like. Not a mother, I'm guessing. Whoa. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Would you be willing to, maybe in a follow-up, we could do a, a segment on this, go with me to arrange, shoot for the first time, and purchase a, and yeah, purchase I'm a firearm? Down. Yeah, I'm, I'm down. Good. Hey, right on target. You okay? Yeah. We grab hands. Yeah, you gotta okay. You got to con connect, connect, connect it over there. All right. You change me. Okay. All right. Look. All right. Look. This is where it's going. There it is. What? There it is. What? All the way around. Look at this. How about that? Look at this. All different races, genders, the power of dance. That's of course, there are always those who aren't so excited to see us. I think you're a bigot, Sarah. Oh. I think y'all are racist. Steven Crowder. Y'all. I would probably punch him if I saw him. I just wanted to tell you, you're a white bitch. Whiteness is a cancer and parasitic to society. We're helping it. They get away with it on this motherfucking campus! Really? Yes, they fucking do! If nobody invited him here, can we ask him to leave this campus? Is this being handled? Shut the up! They you Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen! Yeah! That's right from me! Jesus Christ! Eat my butt! Hey! Is that going to No! No! Men need to respect women! Period! So you should respect women? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, I am a woman, so f*** you! White people are cancer. We want to sit down with people in an ideal scenario and be able to exchange ideas, but when they don't want to, and they're acting like little spoiled brats slash domestic terrorists, we've got to make them afraid of somebody. Hey, kids. Yeah, I didn't you want a piece of me for a long time. Go f*** yourself, you piece of s***. Hey, how are you, man? Steven Crowder, what's going on? We can discuss it at a neutral meeting place. I'm not discussing with people who have made threats against my son, and followers who made threats against my son. When you threaten violence against someone, like, part of being a man is taking ownership of your actions, taking responsibility. And you said you didn't even post this and acted like you didn't know me. I think you're a liar. What did you mean by that? Was it like what you meant with killing members of ICE for five hundred dollars a pop? I don't look like that. Why would you want to light me on fire? I never said this. Yeah, you did. It's like I'm in bizarre land of lies. Yeah. Uh, wow, there is a reckoning. Oh, wow. yeah. so much. Fun times. <laughs> um, yeah. And I do, and then we do have Man. to get going here. I do want to let you guys know the promo code is Crowder Bill, and you get twenty dollars off. And all of that, by the way, is was funded by you. Yep. Like we, some of those, like you can certainly yeah. see the progression. The Muslim bakery was literally a friend acting like he was on his phone, right? <laughs> filming. Well, He's like, hey, why well, he talk long time? No, he doesn't. No, he hasn't said a word. Actually, <laughs> he doesn't bake the cake. I don't bake. Cake. Why he talk? Um, oh, and we missed awesome. a lot of like early on. We missed a lot of filming because we didn't have the budget and for audio, the equipment. Right, right. So yeah, then you can crazy. see, change my mind. Crowder confronts 
all you can see the progression it was all because of mug clips. Yeah. So we do yeah, ask yeah. you because there can be another vo a Vox apocalypse. Uh, Crowd our billion, get twenty dollars off. And uh, the change my mind thing just stemmed from sitting down and me going like, oh, we have so many good conversations, but off air, right? Yeah. And we've done plenty of debates on this show on air. By the way, change my mind is not a debate. We just said, man, I wish we could just talk with normal people without doing political sort of point scoring in a quadrant view. Yeah. And we did not think at this point every single person who was involved with content when we floated the idea said, there's no way that'll work. Yeah. That'll never work. It, it Unedited, yeah. long, just people talking. No one will watch this. To the point where I feel lazy when I do it because I'm like, well, I don't <laughs> want to do another change my mind because I want to do something new. And, and then you guys obviously want us to do it. So that's like I've, I've said, I yeah. want to provide you with what it is that you want and do some new things. Yeah. Um, but I really am grateful. We have, we have everyone here that have met everyone. They all get to work with the show. Let me ask yeah. you, uh, Half Asian Bill. What would you like? Uh, what do you think is next? What would you like to see next for this show? Um, I, I'd say more of the content that we're already doing, um, getting more around the country, seeing more of the fans. Yeah. I know we've yeah. got fans all over the world. Um, I know we were, uh, I think, just this week making fun of the University of Western Australia, and I saw yes. a number of comments of students yeah, at so the yeah. University of Western, yeah. Western Australia dang it. who were like, "Dang, man, I can't afford those carbon dang. offsets." Hey, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, the fires are down. It's right. fine. Yeah. We can go to Australia. No, I, I, I think doing more of that content and, and being able to get around the country is the number one yeah. thing. Uh, more yeah. of it yeah. would be more exciting for everyone. And I just love the energy and the sense of community that people have to be able to just hear some great uh, viewpoints, some honest feedback, and some hilarious shit. So there, you, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there you go. We need uh, enough of you to join so we can get a plane to go uh, to Australia. Yeah. Hey, you know, actually, I'm only half joking because sometimes when we do the live shows, um, it ends up costing less less to rent a plane. We don't get jets, but like a right. like we get like a turboprop. Yeah. Uh, to get all of our team out and all of this equipment, yeah. because you're, you're talking tough. about so much to go to campus. So obviously, we don't expect you to pay for a Learjet, but uh, we can travel to Australia <laughs> yeah. if. Uh, you know, we can take a week off yeah, to exactly. the show because yeah. that's a lot of travel. I think yeah, we're going to send yeah. actually even Brendan uh, on that flight from ah. Sydney to Buenos Aires oh, really? mm. with a GPS just to prove that the Earth is not flat. But he doesn't oh, know no. it yet. He just found out right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, I, I, I want to concur, but for another reason, like uh, it, it gets you an opportunity. Like my favorite memory of everything that's ever been done with this show was when we did the first thing at SMU. Uh, the, what was it? The Halloween Spooktacular? Or I can't remember which one it was. Right. But it was the first time and you filled the auditorium, and that was just such yeah. a big moment. Was, for I, you. I really didn't fill the auditorium. No, no, no. But it, it happened. They all filled the auditorium. They and you did, guys yes. made it happen. I mean, but, there's no way. We, there, I want to be clear. Yeah. There is no way I could have ever done this show that scale, like at SMU and these right. live shows at school. I had done stand up before, and I may go back to doing some more stand up in small clubs. We've talked about yeah. this when I have more free mm -hmm. time. Could not have done it without this team of people. There's right. so much that goes into it. What's the insurance writer? Like a million dollars just in equipment? We have yeah. to yeah. be there a day and a half in advance. So yeah. I'm, that's just that's not false humility. I am so grateful to no, be yeah. able to do that kind of show because it was in here, but I could never make it here. Right. And everyone here is made Well, it and you get to see fans because you deal with a lot of people pushing back on you, right, in life. Yeah. Like you get us, obviously, but everybody else seems to be trying to attack you in different yeah. ways. Um, and so it's great to be around fans, but it's also great for them because they get to be around a bunch of other people that are exactly like them. They're conservative people when it's not popular to be conservative. And so it's great for both that we get to do those live events. So let's get it done at Notre Dame. Let's go there. Notre Dame. Notre Dame, baby. I, did, well, I, did, funny, I know we I talked about Saint it. I did St. Mary's but, a long time ago yeah, uh, yeah. before this show was daily. And uh, I, I remember there were like 400 people who showed up. Yeah. And I thought that was all the people in the world back then. It was just me doing stand-up. And some <laughs> kids showed up. And half the questions at the Q&A were about my time being the brain on Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> this I point, really I didn't like exactly Arthur. have the same familiarity yeah. those out now. Awesome. Yeah. with my catalog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys all very much. And we do have yeah. to get going. That, that uh, promo code is, is, is Crowder Billion to get $20 off. And, you know, I will say in watching that, there have been some things, obviously, we've created, we're proud of the intros and the change my mind. And, and that's probably something I'm, I'm pretty proud of because I, I see a lot of other people trying to do it, do the change my mind and approaching conversations in that way in real life. And, and, and if I can serve to help you with that and help equip you with that in a way that professors have failed you, um, then I'm grateful. But I was even watching that, you know, that, that lady at the abortion clinic, we mm -hmm. never talked about that. She didn't yeah. have that abortion. Yeah. Really? She didn't have that abortion. That's fantastic. We couldn't show that in the video because we didn't want to. This was actually, it was a real uh, kind of moral dilemma because we were going, well, yeah. what's more important is, is it stopping this abortion that this woman is getting anyway? Or is it showcasing the horrors of abortion so that thousands of other yeah. people don't, don't abort? And what yeah. we did was, um, with my permission, some of the girls who went in undercover, I said, uh, they knew she was going in like the next week for the abortion. <clears throat> I said, we're going to release this video before then. So don't reach out to her right now. 
let us release this so we, you know, we can still serve this purpose and, and get this out to the public. And then I want you to reach out to her. Yeah. And uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but I do know that that woman did not have that yeah. abortion. And we also had that girl who we did the change my mind with who came back on the show and then she was pro-life. Yeah. Um, it's seen those things like that, that uh, really make those, the change my minds and the super videos kind of m more important, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's doing something for the well, culture war. the wall, and also uh, when I look back and see that that one where I was shooting at the range that I sounded like death warmed over. Oh yeah, you yeah. Were that's sick. right, you a bronchial really infection, yes. pneumonia, all of the above, and I was at a, a gun range with nothing but uh, gunpowder, and we we that's turned out they couldn't you, buy. Though. That's what's great about you though is like even whenever you're down and you're sick, or or you're really stressed out, or there's bigger things going on, you're always really focused and able to do what you need to do. So yeah, I, we force you to work. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coronavirus be damned. <laughs> with me. Um, I, can I build a Mead and Pyramid as well. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but uh, <laughs> who knew? And then those girls tried to buy that firearm. You know, they wanted, of course, they wanted the Walther. And yeah, this is right. I will tell you this. We didn't lead them. We let them try a Walther, Glocks, uh, different firearms, and they all preferred the Walther. That's yeah. why we always just say, try the Walther. And then they couldn't purchase it because they weren't 21. Ah. And they needed to be 21 yeah. for a handgun. Yep. But afterwards, they had changed their view completely. Completely that you can just purchase a gun without a background check. Right. Um, all right. And then in close, I will say, you know, I mean, I was, it was just seeing kind of Hopper in there. I was like, uh, eh, I kind of tugged on my heartstrings yeah. a little bit. Uh, and I appreciate, by the way, the support. Like, yeah, I get a lot of pushback. I think a lot of times people focus on haters or they focus on negativity. And, and you get that when you're in the public sphere, right? You get a lot of people who aim that at you. But it is so far outweighed, I would say, by what we do here by... Um, how many lives that we see we've we've touched, um, how much this show means to you guys. And, and honestly, you mean every bit as much to us. Uh, you know, I would say more. To me, when I look at the billion, I go, oh, my gosh, this is what these people are choosing to tune into this. When a at a time when media is so fractured, at a time where you have a million different options at any given moment. Remember when we thought media was getting too fractured because of cable, yeah. mm -hmm. because of dish? Yeah. Like, people have, like, 200 stations. Wow. Well, now there's... <laughs> yeah. 200 more just in that pause yeah. were just yeah. created. And the fact that you choose, and, and, and one thing too, like people at YouTube, people in these social media consulting companies, they often look at our numbers and they're dumbfounded at the number of people who just come in every day to watch our videos, whether you're a subscriber or not. And so we've been able to survive a lot of these algorithms. It's a changing landscape because of your loyalty. And um, man, I, I, I hope that we've earned it. I hope that we have billions more. And uh, this, really means, this really means a lot to me. Uh, the show. I don't mean the billion views, just the show. Being able to do this, and I will do it uh, as long as I can and my body allows, which, uh, you know, may not be that long because I'm not only on the FBI uh, ISIS kill list, I'm on the premium yeah. frequent flyer oh, list. Wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah. thank you, Walter. We appreciate your security help. <laughs> Promo code is Crowder Billion. We are going to be uh, releasing some super videos here coming up next week. We'll be back to our regular schedule. Thank you so much. I look forward to reading your comments and, uh, and uh, hearing back from you. Thank you. Thank you.